stop. I think both of us uh, were aware of the work of Alison DeForge, so we should just not say she was like Human Rights Watch's main expert on Rwanda who d perished in that crash in Buffalo. So just, yeah. I mean, as a, as a, it actually, I was thinking in, in listening to Annika's talk, I was like, there are, you know, I'm sometimes not a skeptic about Human Rights Watch. Sometimes I think like they're in the same way of like, like they kind of they they're they're running to a Western beat or whatever, but the, the, these the, the people that they have are absolutely amazing. You know, I mean, Alison DeForge like was was great and 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 rest in peace. But even this Annika is, is is incredible because she basically like so she came. It wasn't it was sort of a it was a kind of a wide ranging. It was basically to summarize recent reports about the LRA killings in northern uh, Congo and about recent. You may know that the, that this the at least on paper, the, the, the Rwandan troops being allowed into Congo to chase down Hutu, Hutu militia. That's supposedly over. There was a ceremony held yesterday to celebrate the departure of the Rwandan troops. Many people are skeptic, skeptical that they've actually left. But, but seriously, because they didn't actually complete the job. The FDLR are still around and according to Human Rights Watch, recently killed 100 civilians in sort of retaliation for having been targeted. So it's all kind of murky, but what it really is is that the president of the Congo, Joseph Kabila, is under under a lot of pressure, uh, 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 even from his national assemb you know, uh, assembly, to get foreign troops out of the country. So they made a big point of saying the foreigners are all leaving by the end of February. But it's in a strange way, and this is where I give Human Rights you know, Watch credit for sort of like really, you know, going to the places, getting the names and the numbers. I wish they had better access yeah. in, like, Sri Lanka, because when they do these reports, they really get the numbers. And, and you know, their thing is sort of like, in both cases, the FDLR in, in the Kivu, you know, Eastern Congo, and the Lord's Resistance Army, Northern Congo, these, uh, these attacks have kind of, like, stirred up a, a hornet's nest, or the, w the word that she used was, you know, it's like wounded lions, but they haven't finished off either group. And these group, both groups are quite vicious and, and sort of, you know, seek revenge or try to, like, put themselves back in the news by just killing civilians. So it's, it's hard to, 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 I thought, I guess, I'll, you know, what was great about a, 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 an expert like that, I guess I would, I would, actually, I would encourage you while she's here to try to, 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 to get her on because she spoke for more than an hour about just down to, like, the nitty-gritty. She called it, like, the Congo soap opera and, like, she's met in Kunda, she's met this guy, Bosco, the number two, um, yeah. She was. There was actually. Here's an ICC thing for you. There was a screening in Bunia, in Ituri, of the uh, first day of the Thomas Lubanga trial. He was a warlord, one of the first ones now accused of recruiting child soldiers as a as a crime under international mm -hmm. law. So he's been sitting yeah. in the Hague waiting for a trial for some time, and the trial started recently. Ocom yeah, yeah, it started uh, just a week and a half ago. Yeah, probably. Ocampo made the opening arguments. Um, yeah, and they and, and to their credit, the ICC as sort of a you know kind of like fresh behind the ears, international justice people. They got a church hall in Bunia and put a big screen and, and wanted to screen wow. it. And, and, and I, I had heard sort of a skeptic sent me an article that like it all fell apart, that some supporters of Lubanga came and that the, the, the screening had to be canceled. She was there, so she said it wasn't, she said it was very exciting because there were definitely supporters and detractors of this, uh, you know, warlord that went, attended. You know, yeah. you couldn't, it's not like the person didn't have supporters, you know what I mean? I mean, actually, th that, that's always sort of sort of funny in these things. There are the, I mean, Joseph Kabila himself is, is quite indictable. You know what I mean? That's all I want to say is yeah. I understand that just because justice isn't equal everywhere doesn't mean you don't have to do something. But it does look right. strange when, 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 in the case of the Congo, all of the ones that have been indicted are opponents of the president. And, in fact, you almost have the, 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 the government of the Congo sort of, I feel like they feel they can use the ICC for their own ends. You know? Right. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I, I've actually right. been um, trying to follow as best I can the, 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 this sure. case, and and to its credit, the ICC makes makes sort of the, they do like these video summaries mm -hmm. of uh, like each day's events, and, and included in the video summaries sometimes are are sort of video document documentary evidence. Sure. You can see sort of Lubanga, like you know, like With the literally, kids and the like, rifles, like right? recruiting and training yeah, yeah. child I've soldiers. You know, you see Lubanga giving orders sure. like to, to kids with AK-47s in their hands, yep. and and sort of singing like the, these sort of songs to, to get them and to, to march in unison. And it's it's chilling, but it's it's like I don't know. It's like to me almost it it sounds detached to say it like this, but it's intellectually fascinating to watch. Sort of how a like modern day war crimes trial actually sure. works. You have these guys in these 
like optically speaking, mm-hmm. you know, you have these people, these men and women in these like robes in in a really high tech looking courtroom in the Hague, right. showing video a of field in Bunia with um, yeah, yeah of, like, of, of, of a field yeah. far away, yeah, with with you know, subtitles and and it, it's I don't know, it, it's it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, I've seen, no, and I think it is again. I don't. It's not to be yeah. too much of a skeptic, but I just want to since she was there, that's what I thought was good. I, in part, I think the the report that I'd seen that somehow the ICC screwed up wasn't pri- quite the truth, but it it, had, it ended up going to the same place because because the the hall wasn't big enough and too many people wanted to see it, and they were according to to her there were these yeah. students, some of whom were UPC or Lubanga supporters outside the hall saying yeah. let them in. They ended up canceling yeah. the ICC, and it was run. The, the ICC was the one doing the screening. They canceled the afternoon mm. session, saying it would be too volatile. Mm. The upshot of it was, though, mm. is that only Ocampo's opening was shown, and the defense opening statements weren't shown, which left a lot of people in yeah. the area saying, you know, this is a, you know, it's a propaganda thing. And I think what what was what she what I was glad to hear from her is that it wasn't like intentionally one-sided. It's just that it didn't yeah. work out. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no. But I, that's again why I give. I give. I mean, really, it was like fascinating because this, the, 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 the uh, you know, the, the. And, but I mean, the thing about it, and this is, the, 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 the she. I had traveled up, obviously not at the, in real time when it was taking place, but these uh, murders committed by the Lord's Resistance Army after the the Ugandans and the Congolese and the South Sudanese tried to knock them out. Yeah. And she said it's just yeah. in all you know. Her and human rights' time in the Congo, they never saw anything like it. Literally, like they, these guys, they all did. It, they did it at Christmas, I guess, to sort of send, a, try to send a message, like never assault us again, or this is what we'll do. They w- they went to churches where people were, were there for 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 Christmas ceremonies and like beat them to death with sticks. She had, they had them like calling out to like so other people would come to the like come to the party, and then they killed those people. So just some outrageous stuff. And and the one thing that was sort of hasn't, I, I feel, hasn't been sufficiently followed up on was this this uncontested New York Times to their credit report that the US was involved in funding and planning the assault on the LRA and I mean I think yeah. it probably is it may it, it if you're gonna do it I mean I think you know a lot of people are saying the US should get more involved in like you know hunting down or apprehending more criminals but if you're gonna do yeah. it it's crucial I think that when you, you the US definitely like stepped back when it went awry and I think that that you know clearly somebody screwed up here in the sense that that yeah. Okay, nobody, I mean, it probably was foreseeable that, like, the day might have been cloudy and you couldn't actually kill the leader of the LRA that day. And, and it, right. seems, it seems pretty uncontested that there were not sufficient precautions taken, either by the Ugandans or we can say the UN. The UN has a peacekeeping mission, as understaffed as it always says it is. She said, from, from Human Rights Watch, she said the UN wasn't told about the assault until hours before it began, so, which yeah. lets the UN a little bit off the hook for not being able to protect civilians, but it doesn't let the U.S. off the hook. Why didn't yeah. the U.S.? Well, what's interesting right. about this, this, this U.S. involvement is, is to me, th- th- this seems to be one of the first like things that AFRICOM did. Yep. I don't know how, how aware viewers are, but over the last year, the United States uh, opened a new command, a new central command for Africa called AFRICOM. Prior to that, um, Africa, all of Africa, fell under uh, sort of the European command, but now it sort of has its own command. And it's brand new, and, and they're saying they're going to sort of try to do things a little differently with Africom. They're going to, they, they, I think, a civilian is is the number two person there, and they're trying to do a little more humanitarian work, some more state building, just sort of try to 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 do more than simple sort of traditional military assistance, but try to add some civilian elements as well, which is all all noble and and you know I'm I'm mm-hmm. all for, but but this was sort of the fir- Africom's first one of their first big actions, and and it seemed to have been a failure. So I, I, you know, it, it, I don't think it augurs well for um, for this sort of new experiment. Right, right, and, and I think I, exactly that's why I also meant there was just sort of a failure to follow up because it really, it's really striking to me that like, you know, mm-hmm. this idea that that, and I'm, you know, I may when it was said like, and it, Doctors Without Borders came out with a report saying that the, you know, the UN peacekeepers were yeah. 